Hello and welcome back to another part of this Principles of Finance series. Um, today we're going to be discussing compounding periods. Um, very important topic. Um, so far, in all our examples, um, we assume that interest is compounded once a year, or annually, um, <coughs> which is called annual compounding. And that's just the arithmetic process of determining the final value of a cash flow or a series of cash flows when interest is added once a year. However, um, let's say you deposited 100 bucks in a bank that pays a 5% annual interest rate, but it actually credits interest every six months. So in the second six month period, you're earning interest on your original 100 bucks plus interest on the interest earned during that first six months. So, what I'm telling you right now is a specific type of compounding, and that is semi-annual compounding. Now, banks generally pay their interest more than once a year, uh, and virtually all bonds pay interest semi-annually. Uh, most mortgages, student loans, uh, car leases, auto loans, those will require monthly payments. Um, so, it's obviously very important to, uh, to kind of understand how to deal with non-annual compounding. So let's <clears throat> let's start. Um, and I've actually created a method which is uh, which is very very helpful for for illustrating how different compounding periods work, and uh, you know it's it's a method as well that's kind of foolproof for for converting between different uh, different compounding periods. Um, and this is a very very popular question, uh, not even in uh, <clears throat> in basic. Uh, finance tests, but even in interviews, a lot of the time, uh, you know, time value of money questions come up, and it's very, very important to understand how different compounding periods um, will affect the way that the interest rates, um, you know, behave, um, and therefore, in effect, you know, how we can actually compare interest rates. Um, interest rates have to be in a like-for-like -like, uh, term in order to, in order to be compared to each other. You can't compare um, you know, an interest rate that's being compounded once a year or annually to an interest rate that's being compounded daily because obviously, you know, the higher that exponent, you know, let's just jot down over here our our formula again PV times 1 plus I to the power of N the higher this exponent, right well, the quicker it's going to grow I mean, this exponent right here is the most important thing to, to that graph, you know, growing up like this the higher this n, you know, the faster this is going to climb. The more interest on interest you're actually going to receive. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the number of compounding periods is obviously very important for that reason. Now, the interest rate that is quoted um, on most occasions, in fact, almost all occasions, even in bonds, uh, will always be called the nominal rate, or sometimes called the annual percentage rate, or APR. Um, that is also synonymous with stated rate or quoted rate, but basically it's the rate that banks and credit card companies and student loan officers and auto dealers and so on tell you how they are charging on your loans um, or how they're paying on your deposits. So if two banks offer loans with a stated rate of 8%, but one requires monthly payments and the other one requires quarterly payments, well then they're not charging the same effective rate because the one that requires monthly payments is really charging more than the one with quarterly payments because it will get your money sooner this <clears throat> you know this is going to grow a lot faster when you know when when things are being compounded more when things are being compounded more frequently so to compare loans across lenders or interest rates earned on different securities you always need to calculate what we call the effective annual rate so let's just write down some of this terminology over here we're going to start off with APR right APR is the annual percentage rate, um, and that is what we're going to call, and what I like to call, INOM, um, which is just the nominal rate, nominal. Nominal means um, uh, nominal rate. Nominal means the quoted, the quoted rate, the the annual rate. Oops, sorry, let's get rid of that. Um, um, and then we also said that there is this idea of the EAR, um, sometimes also referred to as the EFF, um, 
and that stands for the effective annual rate and that effective annual rate is the one that we really care about because that is how much we're actually paying or actually receiving you know when car companies come on tv and they're like oh zero percent apr now you can now you can take out a car for zero percent apr right i don't care about that i care about the ear tell me about the effective annual rate and they usually will tell you in like three seconds at the end when they put on that blabble or they write it in like font size 0 0.72 and they're like, oh, by the way, the effective annual rate is actually 12%. But yeah, yeah, well, I mean, the APR is zero. Yeah, but of course, once you compound it a billion times, well, it's going to make its way up, isn't it? Just like this little graph. So tell us the truth, car lenders. Anyway, let's get back to finance. Um, let's start with this. So number one of this method, because obviously what we're doing is we're taking an EPR and interest rate and we're trying to convert it into its effective annual rate considering that it's being compounded more than just once a year so step number one is to take your APR um, and we'll, we'll do this numerically let's just say that we have an APR of 10% so we have a bank that's quoted us a 10% uh, interest rate we're going to see 10% interest rate on our CD which is obviously unprecedented but let's just say we found a bank that's willing to pay us 10% on our CD and we're asking ourselves is this really 10% or perhaps it's a little more it could be if the if the um, if the bank are going to take the money that we deposit and compound it more frequently than just once a year um, so what we need to do is we need to make this intermediate step between how do we get from the APR to the AR well this intermediary step that we're going to create number two we're going to call I per as we said before the APR can also be referred to as the I nom, which is the nominal interest rate. <clears throat> so the I per is just the I nom divided by M. Whoa, what's M? Okay, let's come over here. M is the number of compounding. periods per year okay now let's just demonstrate let's just give um, a little example or several examples of exactly what does that mean so let's just say well, we started off with annual let's go to semi annual semi annual well semi annual we know is twice a year